3D printing versus pre-painted minis. Ah yes, the age-old question for any dungeon master these days. Should you be buying pre-painted minis or booster boxes? Or make that leap into the world of 3D printing and print your own dang minis? Well, I've done both and maybe this video can help you if you're starting out on your mini journey, or maybe you're just wondering if 3D printing is worth it for being a dungeon master or making minis in general. Well, let's take a look and take this journey together, because here we go! Alright, let's start with the pros and cons of both. Let's start with 3D printing. So I personally have just a basic FDM printer, your old school, out of the box, plain Jane, Ender 3 Pro. Um, I got it probably a little over a year ago, so I have about a year's worth of printing under my belt. And let me start with the pros. Options. That is the biggest thing. There are thousands and thousands of free and especially paid models out there. You can go to sites like Thingiverse, which I love, all free stuff. You can find plenty of uh, models out there and just terrain, it's amazing. Uh, the other big thing for 3D printing that it has going is cost. Um, you can buy a roll of filament for about 20 bucks on Amazon and you can get a ton of minis like I mean I've never just printed like player sized minis with one whole roll but I mean you could probably easily get close to a hundred if not more um, monsters and bigger things like that obviously take more uh, material to make and terrain and things like that but I mean even still I've I've gotten a lot of prints out of just one roll Depending on your personality, it may or be a pro or a con, but 3D printing is a hobby kind of on its own. So if that's something that excites you, if you're looking for like a new hobby to add on, you just can't get enough, you need more to do with your hobby, that's a pro. Uh, otherwise, it kind of falls into the con if you're not looking for an extra thing to worry about. Uh, the other nice thing, especially for me being a dungeon master running uh, my own game of Dungeons and Dragons, I find that it's very handy to have the 3D printer. It makes, it's very flexible for the game that I'm running. So say my players I know next week are going to end up underground and be fighting a bunch of gnolls. Well, I don't have any gnolls on it, like in my mini collection. So I hop on the internet, download some files of gnolls, get the printer running all week and boom, before you know it, I have a whole army of gnolls ready to go for that session. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, some of the cons for 3D printing, uh, definitely the upfront cost. You know, you're going to have to drop, uh, you know, some coin to get that printer initially. Uh, and then you have to keep paying for new rolls of filament each time. Um, I, you're, I think my printer it was on sale. I think it was under $200, but average entry level 3D printer is about 200 bucks. I'd say uh, I'm, there's always deals and things out there, and obviously there's way more expensive ones, but you're looking at about 200 bucks just for the entrance fee to get that printer, and then yeah, it ships to you and you have to build the thing. So again, if you're not looking for another hobby in that regard, that's kind of a con. You have to build and maintain it. Um, and that brings me to my next point, maintenance on the 3D printer. It will break, it will break down, and you will have to figure out what is wrong with it and how to repair it. I have, in the past year, <laughs> learned many things through Googling and looking things up when my printer stopped working. So uh, the big thing is, you know, my printer doesn't have auto bed leveling, so I had to learn, okay, I got the printer built, now I gotta level the bed so that it prints uh, normally each time and that's something that you know sometimes you have to adjust after you make some changes you got to level things all of a sudden the filament's not coming out why is it not coming out oh my extruder is jamming or the nozzles clogged I got to replace it my Bowden tube for some reason uh, is clogged all kinds of things I've had to learn uh, 
in reference to just keeping the printer running. Uh, oddly enough, as I record this video, my 3D printer is not operational. It is not functioning. I know the problem with it. It broke probably two to three weeks ago and I ordered the parts and they already came and I just have not felt motivated to fire the thing up. I just don't have anything I have to print at the moment. But that's kind of been the pattern that I've been in. It'll rock and roll for a few months and then it goes down for a month. And then I fix it and I'm good to go for a few more months. But that's just me. Um, you may not experience that, but that's just kind of <laughs> how I've been dealing with my printer. And we're not even talking about getting into resin printing. Uh, I have a friend, one of my players, who got a resin printer and it's awesome. I mean, if you're looking for high quality prints, resin is the way to go. Now that are gonna be more fragile and all that stuff. Uh, but I found for, at least for DMing, I, I wanted more terrain and big monsters, and I don't need that ultra HD 12K crispiness. Um, yeah, there's some layer lines and things like that, but yeah, once you paint it and prime it, 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 it's not that big a deal. And, you know, the print bed on an FDM printer is much bigger than most resin. And I wanted to print some big terrain pieces. So for me, that just made sense. Another issue with, uh, or a con, I should say, for FDM printers or just 3D printing in general is you're going to have some failed prints. It's going to be printing for many hours. And then all of a sudden, you go to check on it and something happened with the print. Thankfully, you know, knock on wood, I haven't had too many failed prints over the past year and a half, but... I've had a few and you know it stinks but what can you do you just scrape it off the build plate start over uh the other con is that it does take time those prints are going to take hours especially if you have something big i think my longest print that i've done has been like two and a half days just for one thing it was a massive uh, piece of terrain it looks awesome it came out great but uh yeah it definitely takes some time it will just you just gotta let it run um and the thing is it takes up some space you gotta f have a place in your house uh where it can run it, it it's not super noisy but it definitely makes noise and you know it does melt plastic so if you're worried about you know that getting into the air and breathing it you know maybe have it away from where your normal living space is i keep mine in my basement but overall i mean i really enjoy 3d printing it's definitely been fun to make my own minis um but yeah you then that creates more work of painting you gotta you gotta paint them prime and paint them so if you enjoy doing that hey it's more things to paint but if you're not into painting that's another thing to consider you're gonna have a lot of uh gray or whatever color filament models just hanging around that you gotta paint so those are kind of the general pros and cons for 3d printing let's move on to your pre-painted minis or booster boxes. Uh, yeah, I've bought my fair share of booster boxes, as you can see. Uh, they're great. Uh, it's nice to just pick up a booster box. The mystery of what's inside, you get a couple minis that are just uh, ready to go. And that's the biggest pro, I think. Um, the work is done. They're painted. They're ready to throw on your table. No bed leveling, no failed prints. You just find the minis you want, you spend your cold hard cash, and bam, you got them. Uh, the cons, they are expensive. If you look at the cost of like how many minis you can print with a 3D printer versus you're paying 20, 25 bucks for one box that has just four minis in it, it's crazy. Um, that 20 bucks could have bought you a filament that could have printed like 100 minis versus paying 20 bucks for four it, it's wild so if you're buying a ton of booster boxes i mean it adds up you're going to be spending quite a bit of money pretty quick the other problem is is it's random you wanted a mind flare uh you buy that box but you get an animated door uh, and now you gotta rework your whole encounter for the next week uh so that's a problem you're not always gonna get what you want at least unless you buy a whole brick and drop you know 100 plus dollars to get a every single mini in that collection i've never done that that's just that always seemed like way too much 
for you know booster boxes for me at least i know there's people out there that do that more power to you uh i just i i don't enjoy the randomness all the time once in a while it's fun just like to get a surprise but not all the time uh the other problem with pre-painted is that at least from what I've seen, you know, less options. There's not as many pre-painted, ready-to-go minis out there for you. So you really have to scour and look around. Uh, with 3D printing, you go online, you can pretty much be guaranteed you're going to find something that matches what you want. But overall, yeah, I mean, I think booster boxes have their place, but they definitely to me they're fun but they aren't practical um, and I really think what it comes down to is you have to do what you enjoy about the hobby if you don't like to tinker and paint then pre-painted minis are probably best for you and it's probably you know you don't want to spend the time uh, learning 3d printing or painting everything you just want to buy those pre-painted minis and throw them on the table and have a good time. And there's nothing wrong with that. Or if you're looking to save money over time, like you're going to build a big mini collection, maybe learning how to print uh, is something you want to do or something that interests you. And painting is something you find relaxing and fun. Then, hey, maybe that's the way you want to go. Um, for me, I enjoy the mix of both. I like the freedom of 3D printing. Um, and the amount of money that I've saved long term has been awesome. Um, and if you're a DM that likes terrain, again, I really think that FDM printing is the way to go. Um, you know, it doesn't give you those super crispy prints like those resin printers, like I said. Uh, but I personally, I don't need those crispy NPCs. I'm happy with just getting a model that represents something close. Once I paint it, it looks good enough to me. I'm not looking for something that's super high detail um, and I like the durability of an FDM printer um, but yeah that's just my feelings overall I you know you do what you want to do I hope there was some information in this video that was helpful uh, if you have any questions throw them in the comments and I'll reply to you but yeah I uh, it really does come down to your personal preference I think 3D printing is totally worth it if it meets what you're looking for. If you want that freedom, if you want to save money over time, and you don't mind getting your hands dirty in a new hobby um, and investing some time and energy into it, it's fun and it's worth it. Um, if you're just looking to be a little more casual, you enjoy just getting some random minis and throwing them on the table and working around with what you got nothing wrong with that too and then there's other things other than booster boxes there are like the uh D, &D uh board games that have a ton of minis in there there's uh games from cool mini or not if you look out there um, i highly recommend going to check out uh, professor dungeon master he has a bunch of great videos on where to get good minis uh, the board game Hate, which he recommended a long time ago, I got that. That has an amazing collection of minis. I'm not sure how hard it is to find that game anymore, but the board game Hate has amazing minis in it. But overall, you got to debate what's best for you. Money, time, energy, and what you want out of the hobby. But ultimately, do what makes you the happiest as far as bringing joy to the hobby. Don't do something that's going to burn you out or make you start to dislike the hobby itself. You got to do what's fun. But I hope there was some useful information in here, and I hope you have a good time. Keep building, and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.